the retinopathy of prematurity so as the name suggests it occurs in premature children and it is the second most common cause of loss of vision in children kindly note that there is loss of vision in rop and it is the second most common cause only preceded by vitamin a deficiency so the first most common cause can be your mcq for loss of vision in children is vitamin a deficiency and the second most common is retinopathy of prematurity now what are the risk factors which predispose the baby to rop the age of the baby is less than 32 weeks that is the gestational age of the baby when it is born at or less than 32 weeks of gestational age or when the birth weight of the baby is less than 1500 grams that is the baby is a very low birth weight baby and the third and most important Risk factor is excess oxygen supplementation. This is the main reason behind the pathogenesis of ROP. Now, an easy and simple line to remember the predisposed children of ROP is it is the smallest, sickest and the most premature baby that is predisposed to this condition called ROP. Let's look at the pathogenesis. We all know that the retina of a full term normal baby is completely vascularized however we can understand that in a premature baby the retina will not be completely vascularized it is only vascularized up to the aura serrata that is there is incomplete vascularization of the retina so now this baby is born and as soon as this baby is born he is exposed to increased levels of oxygen in the NICU that is the baby is in a relative state of hyperoxia. Now please remember that hyperoxia always causes an amount of vasoconstriction. So hyperoxia always results in a certain amount of vasoconstriction this in turn leads to vaso obliteration and peripheral retina does not develop blood vessels because of this vaso obliteration the peripheral retina does not develop blood vessels this in turn leads to hypoxia please note this hyperoxia is ultimately leading to hypoxia and we have seen that hypoxia always results in the release of vascular endothelial growth factors causing neovascularization now where does this neovascularization occur it occurs at the junction of the vascular and avascular retina these new blood vessels they contract because some amount of fibrous tissue is present in them and they cause a pull on the retina they pull the retina away from the retinal pigment epithelium causing a tractional retinal detachment finally resulting in loss of vision. Now is this clear? The hyperoxia causes vasoconstriction and obliteration which hinders the development of new vessels in peripheral retina causing hypoxia which results in neovascularization and ultimately causes tractional detachment and blindness. Okay. Now let's look at this picture now there is increased oxygen supply in the NICU which causes hypo hypoxia due to vaso obliteration. So this results in increased supply of VEGF and when there is VEGF there are new vessels and then there is your tractional RD. Okay. Now let's look at some important stats that you will be asked in the exam and you have to remember as well the oxygen saturation targets for a full term healthy baby is 95 to 100. You can give 100% oxygen to this baby however to avoid ROP in a preterm baby or saturation should be up to 93% and not beyond that. It can be up to 85 to 93% only in a premature baby. Now coming to the screening recommendations there are two different schools for this. The American Academy of Pediatrics says that a premature baby should be screened at the age of 4 to 6 weeks for ROP. However, in India, we believe that the baby should be screened at 3 to 4 weeks after birth for ROP. So, for AAP, it's 4 to 6 weeks and in India, it is 
three to four weeks please remember this as well now rop is put into certain stages it is classified into stages depending on the level of the disease so the stage one is a demarcation line that you're seeing here can you see this is the demarcation line which marks or which differentiates the vascular retina from the avascular retina this is a two dimensional stage and the line is also a two dimensional structure when this line grows further and becomes a ridge due to growth of abnormal vessels we are going to call it as stage 2 this one that you are seeing here is the demarcation ridge it's nothing but the line lifts up because of new vessels and forms a ridge and this is followed by extra retinal fibrovascular proliferation that is stage 3 that is the ridge grows from the spread of abnormal vessels and extends into the vessels as you can see in this picture in this that the fundus is highly vascularized you can see so many new blood vessels all over here all over here okay that is about stage 3 now when there is fibrosis we have seen that there occurs retinal detachment however this is a partial retinal detachment in stage 4 and when this becomes a complete total retinal detachment you call it stage 5 okay just to summarize stage 1 is our line stage 2 is ridge stage 3 is extra retinal fibrovascular fibrovascular proliferation 4 is subtotal rd and 5 is your total tractional RD. Okay, these are the 5 stages. Kindly try to remember all of these stages. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medico App. Now, thanks for watching the video. Now, we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.